please take your seats. The meeting is about to begin. Please stand by. We are going on air in five, four, three, two, one. Good afternoon. Welcome to the March 5th meeting of the Land Use and Sustainability Committee. Uh, Mr. Attorney, let's do a roll. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's see. Commissioner Dominguez? Here. Commissioner Suarez? Here. Vice Chair Bott? Here. And Chairman Fernandez? Here. And we, we also have in attendance Commissioner Rosen Gonzalez, who's not a member of the committee, and I see that virtually we have Commissioner Joseph Magazine attending virtually as well. Uh, Mr. Attorney, uh, let's give the announcement for virtual participation in today's meeting. Sure. Today's meeting of the Land Use and Sustainability Committee will be conducted in a hybrid format with members of the committee physically present in the temporary commission chambers and staff members, members of the public, and applicants appearing either in person or virtually via Zoom. To participate virtually, members of the public may dial 1-888-475-4499 and enter the webinar ID, which is 8505-9923-037 pound, or log into the Zoom app and enter the webinar ID, which again is 8505-9923-037. Anyone wishing to speak on an item must click the raise hand icon in the Zoom app or dial star nine if they're participating by phone. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. The items that we will be discussing today are items one through five. Mr. Director, are there any deferrals, changes to the printed agenda? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, there's not. Okay, with that, my intention is to take first item number four, which is a presentation on hotels and short-term rental market, followed by item one, which are the FAR incentives, and then followed by items two, three, and five together which are the cap on hotel rooms, zoning districts, and hotel approval process. That's my intent for the order of today's uh, agenda. Is there a motion to set the agenda? I'll make, I'll make the motion. It was uh, moved by the vice chair, seconded by, by the chair. Uh, by acclamation, we can set the agenda. With that, Mr. Director, let's uh, call item number four. Okay, item number four is a discussion regarding hotel and short-term rental market study. Um, Heather Shaw from the Economic Development Department will uh, make the presentation. Thank, thank you, thank you, Mr. Director. Is there a motion to hear this item? I'll make, make the motion. Is there a second? second? Commissioner Dominguez second the item. The item is properly before us. Let me, let me recognize Commissioner Rosen Gonzalez, who is the sponsor of this item, and then I'll recognize uh, the administration. Commissioner Rosen Gonzalez, you're recognized. So the presentation that we are going to hear today was actually started by me in December of 2021. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, okay, of where we are right now, it has taken us uh, nearly two and a half years to get to the place where we even hear this item. The study was finished about a year ago, no? Heather, six months ago? Yeah, about six months ago. Okay, it took about a year and a half to get the study. Uh, once we got the results, it kind of sat languishing um, on the agenda. And, um, you know, and I would say that we almost really need to go back and, and look at the results of the study because when I was looking at it, we don't even know if those numbers are correct anymore or because we know at this point that we're not going to have a convention center hotel by 2025. I was looking at the different numbers embedded in the study provided by the city. So I don't even know if these numbers are accurate at this point in time, if there are more hotels online, if there are fewer hotels online. It has not been updated, so it is not a fresh study. That's what I would proffer. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner <laughs> Rosen Gonzalez, for sponsoring this item. I did feel as a priority for this new land use committee to number to prioritize the issues having to do with transient uses, so much so that we've convened a special meeting uh, on hotel uses, zoning caps, and what the market is telling us about transient uses. And this item is very important that not only have we called a special meeting on hotel uses, but we've prioritized this item as the first item on this agenda, notwithstanding the fact that an old committee had it lingering. So we have prioritized this item. Um, Heather, you're, you're, you're recognized to introduce this item. Thank you, Commissioner and Chair of the Land Use and Sustainability Committee. I'm Heather Shaw. I'm the Assistant Director of Economic Development. Thank you for letting us uh, present the hotel and short-term rental market study to you. I am joined today by Sean 
um, Bourgeois, who is with Delius, who is our consultant who worked with us to put together the study that the commissioner spoke about. Um, yes, commissioner, some of the, the numbers may have changed, but very slightly, not meaningfully, um, just very slightly. So um, I would like to first uh, make sure that Sean is online. Uh, communications is Sean? He is? Great. Um, and I will turn this over to Sean. Sean, I have the clicker and I can um, turn each slide for you if you'd like to begin. Um, and um, if you have any questions, we'll have some at the end of the presentation. Sean? Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Welcome. Sure. All right. Can, can everyone hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. So, uh, those here that we finished in July of 2023. So um, I'd like to note we we finished a bit earlier than that, and then did a um, a pretty decent update on the core um, hotel figures. And I'll I'll show you as as we go through where we updated and sort of the, the vintage of, of these figures. Um, in most cases, I don't think the quantum of numbers is sufficient um, in terms of their their change that that it would. Um, make our recommendations or analysis wrong, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you where, where there, there may be scope for some um, improvement. Okay, Heather, can you flip, please? All right, so just beginning at the beginning. Um, tourism, it's, it's downstream from economic conditions, meaning anytime you're looking at what's happening in the tourism world, you're also really looking across the economy, saying how do consumers feel about um, their, their income? How much, um, how much uh, confidence do, do they have that they can spend you know, X amount of dollars on a, on a trip and it's perfectly fine? Their spending signals in turn are read by the investor community who look and say, is this a good time or a bad time to um, invest in, in new properties? Um, so at the moment, um, we're, we're seeing reasonably good economic conditions, but with enough headwinds and even i just saw uh, maybe two hours ago uh some re reports coming out of, of, about continuing um consumer pessimism over the next maybe six to eight months so it's it, there's still enough uh mixed signals in the economy that we're not in boom time probably have passed the peak of interest rates we've probably passed the peak of inflation but that has not yet trickled down into trickled down into um a, a true bull bull market so just keep that in, in mind as we look to the future of what um potentially may be on the supply and demand side for um tourism okay can you flip to the next slide heather um so looking first at the hotel pipeline in my miami beach um you have in my miami beach two clusters of very strong economic activity where you're um, your, your local conditions are meaningful and meaningfully different than other cities. One of those two is tourism. If we look at what they call the lo location quotient, um, your employment is highly specialized there. So you have a very strong com competitive ad advantage in that market. So when we looked at the tourism pipeline, the hotel pipeline, that was one of the things we were looking at is to see were you overbuilding relative to your other other um, cities who had similarly strong tourism um, economies? And the answer is no. As a rule of thumb, you've got about 2% is what you'd expect to see in su supply additions in each year. As of uh, the first quarter of 2023, you had about 3% growth here. So 3% uh, of supply additions to the hotel base. And I'll, I'll show you in a, in a few slides how that breaks out but um, it's, it's, it's not a stunningly large number. You fit right in line with um, what we would expect to see for a place that has such a tourism specialization. Um, when we look at other indicators of supply and demand imbalance, things we would look for are if you were over su supplied in hotels, you would expect to see the ADRs are falling, vacancies are rising, you may see bankruptcies. Uh, we see none of that. In fact, we see reasonably strong, stable ADRs, vacancies. Again, they bounce seasonally, but we're we're well within his, historical norms. 
Um, there's really nothing at the macro level that suggests that you've got a supply, an oversupply issue um, within the um, hotel uh, market. Okay, next slide. When we get to STRs, the picture does change. So when we get uh, to the S STR market, the first thing we wanted to do was to isolate some comparator cities that were similarly uh, placed to My Miami Beach in terms of having um, a, a, almost the same share of employment that My Miami Beach has for um, things that fall within the, the tourism cluster, right? So we had cities like Nashville and New Orleans and San Diego, uh, Tampa, um, and none of these are direct one-to-one uh, -one com comparators with Miami Beach. I mean, what you offer is unique in the country, but we still wanted to have some way to look to, to say, how do we stack up on a, on a per capita basis? So when we ran the, both the um, hotel room numbers and the STR numbers, the hotel rooms come out um, where My Miami Beach is about middle of our com comparator pack. But when we got to the STRs, you had uh, the highest ratio, meaning the most rooms per capita within the STR bucket of all of our cities that we looked at. Now, because your population is so small, that alone is not sufficient to say you've got an STR problem. What we um, further did is go to some of the larger cities and try to um, look at only the areas that, were, um, that, that had high levels of tourism visitation. So that we could say, for example, I live in New New Orleans. My neighborhood has zero tourists. If I go to the French Quarter, that's where you will find 95% of all the tourists who, who come to this uh, city. Um, so if I look at the overall numbers for New Orleans, I get a completely different picture than if I look at just the French Quarter. So we, we did that, and what we found is um, – Miami Beach is not at the highest level anymore, but it's still a reasonably high number, all things con considered. So it's, it's a fair point to say that you're oversupplied, or at least your supply of STRs is on the high side. That likely is not an issue of um, supply chasing too little demand. It's likely a, a case that you have a lot of demand which has stimulated the entry of supply into the, the market. But we can come to that uh, in, in, in a few minutes. Can you flip to the next slide? Okay, so if we look at the hotel room total inventory, and again, I think this is true as of um, Q1 2023, um, but it's not much different now. I, I just got um, the Greater Mi Miami Visitor Bureau numbers for Miami Beach, and I, I think here we're at 21606. And I think their numbers were 21, maybe 250. So that's what I'm, I'm, I meant earlier when I said that we can change the numbers for updates, but you're not going to find substantial changes in the take-home points here, which is, you know, give or take, you're about a third of the total market in the area, and you're one of the key tourism locations in the, in the, uh, the market. So that's, that's why you have so, so many rooms. Um, go to the next slide, please. If we look at the pipeline, though, you'll start to see some interesting differences appear. So first off, even though we're a third of the total inventory, our pipeline is third highest. So here we're at 2248, and that 2248 puts your arms around the entire pipeline at all stages of planning. So if you flip to the next slide. That 2248 in turn dis disaggregates, and, and we made this cut. So. Um, if, we, if you use Smith Travel Research, um, they, um, they separate out based upon their view of what stage a, um, a, a hotel is in. And so we took those stages that were either in construction or final planning to be more likely to be built and those that potentially could slide and push them to, to the side because of interest rates being so, so high and we work all across the country, there just is not substantial pressure to get product to market now, um, you know, as you talk to investors, they'll, they'll tell you that if it's possible to postpone, they will postpone currently, not delay uh, inordinately, but you know, if it's reasonable to hold on for a year, that's what they'll they'll do. Um, so that gives us from the 2248, we're down to 1600. Um, can you flip to the next slide, please? 
And if we take those same numbers, the same 1600, and we look across the years of planning, and I, I heard Commissioner Gonzalez say earlier that the 800 rooms for the um, for the convention center hotel likely won't happen in 2025. 20, uh, so that's true. But that would just scale this back to let's say 2026 uh, or even 2027. But it, in a sense, it makes the, the point for us that we're the, the 1600 rooms that we see currently may be as few as 800 or so over the next year and a half, uh, even two two years. And the, the balance would flow in over the, the following three, four years. So again, if our 2% of total supply additions is the threshold, we're unlikely to um, break that gap. And that's for an average economy, not an economy that has a strong specialization in, in um, tourism. So the supply side looks, looks good for um, hotel. Okay, let me go to the next slide, please. Um, we, we also did the, the same um, assessment looking at just what the city has because the, the permitting data and Smith Travels data, um, they don't necessarily match because Smith Travels also talking to brokers and finding out who's acquiring properties. Some of the acquisition events haven't yet been registered in the city's, um, in the, in the city's permit department, things like that. But when you look out here, what you notice is, is the same thing. You have about 1,200 rooms that are coming, but they're not even allocated yet to a specific time period. So again, we're, we're just not seeing strong pressure within the hotel supply market. So that, that should be good, good news. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, here's, our, here's our read across um, different, different markets in the US looking at who's building what in terms of su supply additions uh, Miami Beach in green, Miami right across the water at 2.99%. And what you note is, um, again, you're just not wildly off what the long-term average addition rate is. So again, good, good, good news. Okay, next slide, please. Um, when we did our STR assessment, we looked at a number of factors before we um, before we crunched any real numbers. And this is just giving you some understanding of. The cities we looked at, there, there are different sizes and why, why we chose them. Okay. You can, you can go for it. Yep. And here's our per, per capita numbers, right? So um, on the hotel room side, uh, my, Miami Beach is a 3.84. Uh, San Diego, when you look at the entire city, which goes way inland, um, you get the 21.36, meaning there's one hotel room per 21.36 residents in Miami Beach of one for every 3.84 residents. But if I go to Coronado within San Diego, which has a big um, tourist economy, we're about half of what Miami Beach has. And the same thing for Tampa within the, I think that's 30802 zip code. Um, when, when you look at S STRs, though, you'll see that uh, Miami still is, um, even compared to the other two tourism hotspots, you do have a, a very high concentration of S STRs. And the, the combo, and this is a, a point worth noting, is, you know, it's um, hospitality works as a unit in the sense that there's external demand. It's people want to come to Miami Beach or any any place, right? And they, they look at their option for where they can stay. And um, some uh, some tourists have very strong preferences for STRs versus hotels. Others are the complete reverse. Um, but that market is, um, it works as a unison. People increasingly so sort of look across their option before pulling the trigger. And that also means that STRs, which have um, really fairly different underlying um, bases for entering the market, need to be thought of as much um, as, as as much as they're part of the standard hospitality set. Um, it's it's a squishy group, so you you may have a core of five, six, seven thousand units that are sort of roughly always available. And then you have opportunistic uses where people rent their sort of people who would ordinarily not rent their their house or their apartment may do it for one weekend because they can make a whole lot of money in a, in a short time because there's some of an X that's that's happening. 
So, um, you know, the, the incentive basis that drive S STRs is a, a unique differentiator in com comparison with the, um, with the standard uh, hotel rooms. Okay. Uh, this is just, we, we, we looked at um, how your, how the split of those two markets would compare. And, and again, just shows that my, Miami Beach does have a relatively higher number of S STRs. Okay. You can go, Heather. Yep. Um, then we also looked at, well, go, go back one, one, one second. Um, we, we also looked at um, unlicensed STRs because, you know, the, one, of, one of the big challenges is no one, no one across the country has found a one-size-fits-all solution for regulation of STRs. It really ranges from we will do very little all the way down to we will try and legislate these things out of existence if possible. Um, the reality is um, neither approach seems to work well, and so there's a whole lot of competing middle ground. And this graph just shows you that in spite of various regulatory regimes, um, you sort of have a, a widely divergent um, list of, of um, how many units within a given city are un, unlicensed. And some of the ones, by the way, at the 100% level, like Austin, Bozeman, and Newark, um, it's not necessarily that they're all unlicensed. I actually spoke to the people who made this database to understand that data point more. And in some cases, it's because of the way the data is presented through um, Air, Airbnb. So um, it's probably not the case that all of those units are un unregulated. Okay, next. Okay, um, it's worth noting here, I've written um, hotels in, in red, but you know, we. When you think about hospitality rooms, whether STR or hotel, they fit at the sort of intersection of people coming in to spend money and all the people who service them, right? Whether it's hotels or, or um, service providers, taxis, you, you name it. But, you know, it's people coming to your neighborhood to spend money. And um, as hotels or STRs are limited, if the demand that underlies that supply doesn't shift, all you've done is, is move it. So, you know, in, in one instance, one way to sort of think about this mentally as you're thinking through policy options is um, if you could wave a magic wand and eliminate STRs to, tomorrow, if, if some portion, let's say, moves into the existing hotel facility. So now your ADRs jump up because vacancies are zero and hotels can charge whatever they want it becomes a very expensive place to come and the rest of the people maybe go across the um, bridge to Miami proper and then take taxis or drive over. Then you've sort of created different problems, even though you've gotten rid of one, you, you've exacerbated traffic, for, for example. So the, the, the issue is just contextually, we, we wanted to make sure that we had presented the, the point that you know balance works well and sometimes unintended consequences can really and really be impactful. Okay. Um, if you, uh, as an example, if we were to cap hotels, even though, again, we saw there's not much hotel supply pressure, but as a thought experiment, were we to cap hotels, what you might end up doing is should demand continue to grow, you um, unintentionally stimulate more STR activity. In a way, hotels become an off-ramp for um, the demand that would fuel additional S STRs, um, you know, it gives people a, a, an easy way to book. Um, they're safe, efficient, easy to regulate. And typically, you the hotel uh, growth for that reason. STRs often copy the hotels where they see hotel demand is such that hotels can't keep up. It, it brings people out of the wood, woodwork to offer apartments or, or uh, private homes into the uh, market because there's unmet demand. And so um, trying to figure out how do you balance that unmet demand with your su supply side assets is really the, you know, one of the key regulatory issues here. Um, you, you can skip this. It's, it's okay. There's, there's been some changing in how um, visitors come to the island. But um, I guess if, if we sort of take this down to the, the final uh, summary point, as long as you've got demand that's at current levels and even growing, you, you know, 
your ability to meaningfully stop hotels and not have an impact on the measures of supply and demand, meaning the ADRs and the STRs that, that um, grow as a, as a function of that demand is very limited. Um, if tourism demand were going into re reverse, it kind of drags everything down with it. But as long as people are willing to pay to, to stay there, um, it's first that that demand is going to go find a home and people who are willing to ignore the regulatory frameworks that are currently in, in place normally continue to, to do that. So it's a, you know, it can be tricky, but um, hotel um, uh, hotels themselves are often a good supply intervention because they're just easier to regulate than S, S, STRs are. Um, so that's that's sort of the, the snapshot of what we did. The report itself, as you've seen, is is very um, thorough. We go through a bunch of other things. So if you have other questions on it, feel feel free to uh, ask. Mr. Chairman, thank you, thank you, Sean, for for, for the presentation. Um, it's it's interesting how how here in Miami Beach we have the highest density per capita of SDRs, uh, and that and that certainly is concerning because it talks to our speaks to our broader broader market. Um, how do we promote ourselves? Do we continue promoting ourselves as tourism being the our real bread and butter, or do we want to diversify uh, from that? Um, because you know, at, at the end of the day, it's it's the demand on hospitality that is driving the demand for hotels, and then what's very telling is that as we see. The market on hotels increase is also driving the increase on the demand for STRs. Uh, Commissioner Suarez, you're recognized. Uh, uh, is the caller still up? Yeah. Yes. He's 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 a presenter yes. hired by the city. Sean. Hey, Sean. Commissioner Suarez. Um, Hi. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're saying that it, the more hotels we have, the the more STRs are gonna are gonna become in demand, but the more, uh, alternatively, the more restrictions we have on hotels, the greater the SDRs are also going to increase. So, no, no. I mean, we're, we're sort of in like no, no. a catch-22. No, yeah, no, it's, it, it, no, hotels often, I mean, they, the, the two markets, the hotels and the S, S, STRs work in concert, meaning that often the other way, though, the STRs are sort of looking to um, just overall demand for accommodations but visitors often go to hotels first. They'll include the S STRs within their, um, you know, frame of, of reference. Should we go Air Airbnb if Hilton is too too high, right? But um, hotels are still the um, the dominant mode of of stays for for most travelers, and um, they they often if there's a, a sufficient supply. They will take some of the wind out of the sails of the S S S T R market Th through the chair. But if, 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 if I may, Sean, if I if I understand you correctly, <laughs> to, together with with your earlier point, I guess your your point was taking a balanced approach to the regulations, uh, so that so that we don't take an extreme approach uh, on 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 hotel regulations that then create an unintended impact on short term rentals, and so just making sure that 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 there's yes. a, a you know fine balance not to tip the scales almost yes um yes to, Commissioner Suarez. To, to the chair. so I, I just wanted to be clear so are, are we in a sort of catch-22 that if we do hotel restrictions we get more strs but if we have more hotels we get an increase in strs no, I, I think part of that's true. If you stop hotels, you're likely to stimulate STR growth. Yeah. Um, you know, you're fueling a, a sort of black market at that point, if you want to call it that. Even if you allowed all the regulation, people see the demand, they, they want to enter it and make, make money. Um, hot, hotels often take some of the wind out of the sails of the S, STR market, right? Because it, it provides an off, off ramp for people to book it. Um, if there's no regulation at all, then you may have your second point. That you um, that you continue to grow that S STR market as people see new ho hotels coming on uh, line, but hotel competition as new new buildings come up, um, hotels are very sensitive to new supply additions. As new um, hotels come on, they tend to lower rates, which um, you know, keeps them in competition with one another, and S STRs in turn feed off of that. It's hard for them to be um, 
higher price than a um, hotel. Sorry, were you okay. going to say something? Yeah, and through, and through the chair. So um, when your analysis, how, how what was the breakup of legal versus illegal SDRs? 60% of them are unlicensed. Okay. Is, that, is, that, is that correct, uh, Sean? Yeah. Right, right. According to the, the data source that we, we used, um, and, and we used two, two or three, by the way, because none of them agree with, with one another. I mean, the, the challenge is um, the number of units that are available for rent is not the same as those that are actually booked um, in, within any given week, month, year. It, it fluctuates constantly. And, but and, what, and, what we can and, say and, with absolute yeah. certainty. And, and I guess the point would be to avoid creating more of an unlicensed, unregulated market um, and, and, seeing, and seeing how, how even we can create regulations using zoning that could even encourage the proper registration of these, of, of these uh, uses, possibly. It's, it's what I concluded from your, from your presentation. Absolutely, yeah, that, that's one, one option. I mean, because there is no agreed upon formula, one, one thing that you're beginning to see is, um, you know, how best can you corral these investors into areas where it, it would be uh, more okay, permissible, would fit with the, the character of, of the neighborhood that you could um, allow S, S, SDR in those areas while increasing restrictions in neighborhoods where people don't want to see it or it just doesn't fit the character, right? I mean, it's, this is part of getting the, the fine-tuned balance, right? Well, uh, yeah, so through the Commissioner chair. Commissioner Suarez, and then, and then I'm going to come, uh, go back to Commissioner Rosen Gonzalez, and I think uh, the vice chair wanted to, no? Okay, you're good. Um, All right, Commissioner Magazine, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so if 60% is unlicensed i mean uh, maybe tom you can answer unlicensed means it's illegal uh they're not permitted um and, and if that's the case is that necessarily a code enforcement well, issue on, well, on our well i think i i think we, we need to go through the city attorney on that because um you know some of these might be allowed under the zoning code uh, especially given some some of the state regulations but they might be derelict in their in their requirement under the code to register with with the city so they might not be illegal short-term rentals per se but they've failed to comply with their requirement under under the code to to complete their registration mr attorney correct me if i'm wrong in that and, and that could be the case i mean i, I wouldn't know for for how many of them i mean and it sounds like it's it's hard to to gather this 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 uh, this data anyway, but um, but in either event, you know, either it's a short-term rental that is unauthorized under under the zoning code, in which case, um, you know, that that's a zoning violation, or it's a short-term rental that's in a district that that allows for short-term rentals, but they've they've failed to register, and 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 that that is also a violation of the city code, but but theoretically they could come into compliance. We don't know that breakup, right? Uh, Sean, uh, do we? Is there is there yeah. any way to get data on that? Which ones? Which ones are, you know, perhaps, you know, illegally operating as a, as a short term rental in violation of the zoning code, uh, as as opposed to those, you know, that are allowed under the zoning code but are not meeting the requirements of our municipal code uh, to register as a short term rental with the city. So we can look at, at that. We have about 2,400 that have BTRs. So we do know those. But then as Sean mentioned, um, the number of STRs in the market fluctuate based on you know, high impact days. So we can go on average of 5,000 that are in existence and we can look to see how many of those are, are zoned properly and also have STRs. But we can also, when we have a really high impact day, we can go as high as 10,000 STRs that are on on um, VRBO or Airbnb. Yes, Commissioner Rosen Gonzalez and then Commissioner Magazine. Okay. Um, the reason I commissioned this study, and I just went on, for example, hotel tonight, right? And you could stay at the Catalina for 98 bucks. We're in the middle of season. We're under $100, okay? Um, and as you can see, what it says is if you want our average daily rate to increase, 
we have to stop <laughs> building hotels. Now, I know he says that it's healthy, but when you look at the fact that we're 33% of the um, overall hotel market, we have the traffic and infrastructure issues that we all know um, that we're facing and the fact that our population did drop as of the latest census from 90,000 to about 78,000, I believe, 81? Okay, somebody, so right. just 81. So wait, um, wait, okay. it's so easy to I'll recognize that at the appropriate me. time. <laughs> um, so th the reason I had this commission is because I really wanted a justification for us to uh, put a pause on the amount of hotel rooms that we're building. And, um, it, and also, from a public safety standpoint, we also know that when our average daily rate drops um, to under about $130, we have more incidences of you know, public uh, drunkenness, just overall. There's a correlation between room rates and crime. So nothing, none of what we're doing exists in a vacuum. And the reason why I would like us to stop is because more doesn't mean better. And growth isn't always the type of growth that we necessarily want. I know that Commissioner Magazine wanted to um, explore a moratorium because he sees that we're losing community to tourism and hospitality. I understand that hospitality is very profitable. And I think that one of the biggest issues that we face is that building the kind of workforce housing that we want isn't economically viable for developers, which is why they've been taking these properties and turning them into short-term rentals. Also, people who own these garden apartments who at one point used to, you know, rent them out, they are now, they're all, they've all turned into short-term rentals. So while we can't regulate, um, well, we can regulate the amount of short-term rentals, what I would like to see us do is pull back on the hotel rooms. Thank you, Commissioner Rosen Gonzalez, and I, and I think this uh, body uh, probably feels strongly just seen by the amount of co-sponsors who have signed up on every single item on this agenda having to do with repealing incentives, limiting the proliferation of new hotels, limiting zoning districts on hotels, capping maximum number of hotel rooms, uh, and, and the other initiatives on this agenda. Uh, I think that, that the number of co-sponsors showed that we're probably pretty, pretty you know, aligned in that, in that thought. Um, I want to recognize Commissioner Magazine and also uh, Sean at the appropriate time. I'd like to get your input on on ADRs, uh, how how last minute reservations may impact ADRs as as opposed to uh, you know someone looking to come to Miami Beach looking to make a reservation a month in advance as opposed to 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 you know if I'm in Miami Beach today and I want to make a reservation today in a in a hotel wanting to you know get a last minute reservation and, and lowering rates for for that purpose i'd like to to get your input on that um but commissioner magazine you wanted to be recognized yes yeah, I, I appreciate it thank you chair yes uh, yeah, i appreciate the analysis uh, sean from the economic development department um everything that was said during that study about the uh unintended consequences of limiting or thwarting uh future hotel room growth extrapolate that to residential housing and that is essentially the community that we're living in now. So the unintended consequences that Sean laid out of what if we don't continue building hotels at a two to three percent uh, per year new inventory, that's essentially what we have done either intentionally or unintentionally mm -hmm. from a residential housing standpoint because we haven't grown in that same uh, uh, parameter that Sean laid out there. So when we look at traffic issues, pushing up prices, the ecosystem that's created around us, our chief uh, of police actually just opined at the last city commission meeting, the strain on resources that is actually uh, very, um, very much skewed towards transient usages versus what's stemming from our residential community. So it's really an entire ecosystem that we're uh, looking at here. Me, my goal here is not th to thwart growth or thwart development. It is to get the usages right. And I just feel as if we're at a huge imbalance and a mismatch. And that has a determination on everything that we see. It is why our city is the spring break capital. It is why residential housing prices are pushed up, why hotel ADRs are pushed down. Um, I don't know if it's best to get into uh, this discussion point or uh, maybe one of the further ones, but 
Tom, if you could just, you know, briefly, and I know I'm asking you to paint with a very, very broad brush here. Um, I'm just hoping you, you can, you know, use some uh, common sense, I, I guess, if you will. I know this isn't applicable to our strictly residential areas, but in essence, is our code, and this was probably implemented when we made some revisions about 20 years ago, would you say in our, uh, our non-exclusively single-family home residential areas that the code and zoning has been created to essentially incentivize hotel development? Decades ago, the, the code was definitely modified to incentivize yeah. hotel development. I'm, I'm, Mr. Commissioner, we have items on the agenda that speak specifically to the FAR incentive. The next item on the, on the agenda, item one, is specifically on the possibility of repealing uh, the, the FAR incentives that we have on, on hotels. I want to limit this item on the presentation before us uh, because we do have a presenter, uh, and I don't want to occupy his time uh, before we go into, into those items. I don't know if you have any questions directed to the presenter on the, on the presentation. No, no, that's fine. Me. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, okay. Commissioner Dominguez. Thank you so much. I, um, I do also agree with the Chair that uh, we do have to have a balance and uh, we don't want to have unintended consequences. But in, um, if I have the numbers correct, and the Finance Chair could probably correct me if I don't, 60% um, of um, our operating budget is from property taxes. So, you know, residential housing is very important and contributes to the budget of Miami Beach. So that is absolutely true. We have low ADRs because we have many hotels that are old and dilapidated and maybe the owners don't invest a lot. But there are some positive things on the horizon. We have the Amman, the Bulgari. Michael Schwo is redoing the Raleigh and it will be a Rosewood property. The Shore Club's being redone. Um, and there are many properties now uh, across the beach, hotels that have higher ADRs, uh, especially now in season. But uh, yes, we do have many old ones that uh, can't get very high ADRs because it's, the property is not worth it. Uh, but anyway, well, I just wanted to share that. Wait, Thank you. I, I mean, understood. But if we didn't have any supply, we just have an over, we just have an overabundance of supply. So I, I, I don't like the fact that the study came out saying that it's okay to build more and that we should build more. I think there's something wrong with this <laughs> with the study. Well, because I know when you compare it compared to other places, but when you look at the percentage of hotel rooms that we have compared to everyone else, the fact that we're going to, the, the, the overabundance that we do, the, what they're building in downtown and the competition that we're facing to tell us that we should build more seems uh, yeah. Absurd. Thank you, Commissioner. And 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 I Wait, think and, and and I think with I wasn't with studies. Finished. Wait, <laughs> I, well, I'm just saying I, I was I, I wasn't I wasn't finished. I don't think that we should be afraid of um, of saying moratorium with the sunset for a couple of years when we look at the pricing. I know you have other items on this agenda. I have to leave. That's why I'm speaking my what saying what I wanted to say now. Um, you're right. We have some old hotel rooms, but at the end of the day, it is all supply. Um, and demand, and we have too many. And I think when that convention center hotel is built and it floods the um, off the water rooms, eight, 800 rooms, then you're gonna see that $98 rate that we have right now is gonna drop. And I would say that that $98 is gonna drop, you know, 20, 30%. So, um, and, and then we're gonna wonder why we have to have these spring break problems and, um, you know, close down our parking garages and our nightclubs. So. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, so, you know, and, and the thing with these studies, we commission these studies and, uh, and, and the studies bring us information. We don't commission studies that we always agree with, but we commission studies that give us information that we can then use in our legislative capacity. Uh, and for us to use our judgment, the judgment that that the public have has elected us to to use, so 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 we don't pay studies to give us the information that we want to agree with. We pay uh, these studies to give us independent information. We don't, we might not always agree with it, uh, but 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 you know we don't want just them to tell us what we want to hear. Unfortunately, uh, with that, uh, should we call uh, item number one, uh, Mr. Director? 
Uh, Heather, yes, I'm sorry. I Thank you very much, Commissioner. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we had it on the record that our average daily rate as of last week for the city was $422.96, and the average national ADR is $155. So, and our occupancy is actually 87% and the average occupancy is 63%. And let me so ask you on that. Well. When, so, so, so if that same hotel room, because it is a concern, <laughs> it is a concern we've seen on, on a recurring basis. Um, I know the Miami Today you know, wrote, wrote an article probably or, or an editorial probably a month or two ago specifically on this issue. Um, is there a difference in the average rate? Like if I go the same day to book a hotel room, uh, will the average rate be lower as opposed to a visitor, you know, that's looking from outside our market a month or two in, in advance on the on the rate that they'll find? It's very similar to like buying an airline ticket, mm -hmm. and it'll change. The rate can change daily, if right. not weekly. What we do is we measure year on year, the same week for each year to see if anything is going up or down. Um, but for Miami Beach, we consistently have high occupancy, high ADR. Okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. Director, let's call item number number one. Okay, and uh, Mr. Chair, just for the record, uh, do you want to show item four discussed and concluded? Yeah. Well, it was it was a presentation, Commissioner Rosen Gonzalez. I'm not sure if you wanted if, if the intent was for there to, to be action. I think it was probably for us to have the benefit of this information as we consider these items. You'll have my support on any type of um, disincentivizing hotel room um, zoning. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think I, I think it'd be great if you could stay a, a part yeah. of this. Because well, I have this to go to the women's commission because I'm on the agenda there. But I can stay. I could stay for the f five more minutes. Okay. Yes. With that, uh, Mr. Director, let's call item number one. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair. Item number one is to review and consider repealing the 0.5 FAR incentive for hotel development in the CD2 commercial medium intensity zoning district. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to bring this item before the committee? Okay, it's been moved. It's I'll been second. seconded by, by Commissioner Suarez. The, the item's properly before me. This is an item I placed on the agenda in December. Uh, back in the 1980s, Mr. Director, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there was a zoning code rewrite that created an FAR incentive uh, for hotel development uh, in the CD2 districts of, of our city. Uh, and, uh, and, and it includes areas like Alton Road, uh, there are CD2 districts in North Beach. Uh, there are CD2 districts on Washington Avenue. Uh, and Mr. Director, just for the benefit uh, of, of the public, walk us through this item. Walk us what this FAR incentive actually means um, and how we could further limit the, the, uh, pro the proliferation of, of hotels uh, by, by policy on this matter. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, as the chair indicated, um, this particular incentive was created sometime in the 1980s. And what it does is in the CD2 district, the maximum FAR in the CD2 district is 1.5. And there is a provision that allows for up to a 0.5 bonus that's applicable solely to residential or hotel development. So if somebody uh, in the CD2 district, um, say on Alton Road, wants to develop their property as all residential. They could go up to 2.0. If they wanted to do 1.5 of commercial, they could add an additional 0.5 of, of only residential. And so this would allow the developer to go above the 1.5 up to 2.0 as long as at least a quarter of the project is residential or hotel. By amending the code, as uh, contemplating in this discussion item to remove the 0.5 bonus for a hotel, that would mean, for instance, along Alton Road, if somebody sought the 0.5 bonus, it could only be for residential. So they could still do a 1.5 for purely commercial, but to get to 2.0, uh, that remaining 0.5 would have to be residential. Thank you, Mr. Director. Uh, Commissioner Bond. Um, to be to be clear, um, we're not able to um, disincentivize hotel and, and keep the residential at, um, and also require that it be six months and a day rentals. That would have to be something negotiated with the developer on a project-by-project project basis if they were willing to proffer that. 
That's correct. We have amended the CD2 regulations in the past to create incentives, most recently for office uses, by allowing for increased height. But they could only take advantage of the residential bonus in that instance if they agreed to proffer a covenant where none of the residential units would be leased for less than six months in a day. And if I may, and, and, and I believe that Commissioner uh, Magazine and a number of us uh, have, have been co-sponsors on, on an item that has to do, uh, I think it's the, it's the approval process uh, that we're all co-sponsors on, uh, that perhaps through that approval process, depending on the action that the body wishes to recommend to the city commission, could put those limitations. Uh, an avenue through 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 which we could you know perhaps get proffers or or some sort of commitment on the limitation of STRs, because your question was was an STR correct? So perhaps through the approval process uh, that that we're going to consider as part of item number five, that's something that we could uh, consider. Are there any other questions on item number one? Uh, just for, for, for purposes of the public, uh, Mr. Director, what is the recommendation of the, of the planning department on item number one? So on, on item number one, what we had suggested is that um, if there is a desire to remove the 0.5 bonus for hotel, that it would apply to Alton Road. Um, Washington Avenue, which is another CD2 district, already has a number of hotel uses, and that perhaps could um, use further study. But along Alton Road, because of its proximity to residential districts, um, that if there is a desire to remove that bonus, that it would apply to Alton Road. Oh, now, are there are there districts? Are there CD2 districts in North Beach that we should be considering uh, this this applying to? Because what I wouldn't want to see, uh, I and and I understand Washington Avenue. I almost see there being a logic uh, to 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 Washington Avenue maintaining per, perhaps a. Uh, some sort of incentive on Washington Avenue. It's, it's an area of our city that needs economic development, uh, and we want to continue doing that. It's almost like, I, I almost feel like it's an emergency on, on Washington Avenue. But then you have areas further into our city that are closer to residential areas, like Alton Road, or, or even areas of North Beach. Are there areas in North Beach that we should be looking at these CD2 districts and, per, and perhaps uh, having a similar recommendation of repealing uh, that that 0.5 FAR incentive. Yes, there, there's two CD2 areas um, in North Beach. One is, uh, along the, is, is located on the east side of Normandy Isle, which is in between uh, two RM1 districts as well as single family zoning. So it's much more um, low density, low intensity residential that is abutting that CD2 district. And then the other area is uh, adjacent to the RM3 district along Collins Avenue, roughly from 65th Street to about 69th Street. And that essentially is on the uh, west side of Collins Avenue. And, 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 and I think that that's so important because when you look at our zoning map, the, so the, the, the Washington Avenue CD2 district is, is bounded by mixed-use entertainment. Uh, and, that's, and, and, and that's a pretty big part of, of, of the boundary of the Washington Avenue CD2 district. But once you start going into areas where where the CD2 districts that have these incentives are bounded by 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 residential multifamily, which are which are our RM districts, that's where I feel we we need to put that protection in place. We certainly don't want, I I believe, to be seeing any hotel development incentivized or encouraged in any in any of those areas. And I almost feel we should be including. Um, and I'd give great deference to the vice chair, who is a North Beach resident, but I certainly do think we should be including uh, some of these uh, CD2 districts bounded by, by, uh, by RM1, RM2 zoning in, in North Beach as part of the repeal that, uh, proposed by this body. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, there is an affordable housing crisis all over the country, and it's um, locus in, in our city is in part in North Beach. And so to protect any way we can the possibility of, of more housing options for more people at a variety of incomes is the way to go. Um, so I would definitely include North Beach in this. And actually, 
I know we agree on an, an awful lot of things, but I would actually suggest maybe we do it slightly differently. We take Washington out as an opportunity for further study. But I feel that Washington Avenue, um, which, you know, we've got the Washington Avenue bid, which is trying um, to move heaven and earth to revitalize that part of the city. I think the only thing that is going to get us to where we want that neighborhood to be is actually increased full-time residential. And I don't think that we should take it out. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to defer a final decision for further study, but I actually think the best vision for Washington Avenue, um, because it is across the street from residential, and we have hotels there now who are not being great neighbors, um, I think the best way to get Washington Avenue to be fully incorporated into the the vision that we all hold for Miami Beach is making available residential units. People can walk to Feinberg Fisher. Um, they can walk to mm -hmm. grocery stores. They can walk to playgrounds. They can walk to cultural arts institutions. They're a few blocks from the beach. You know, it is um, mid-rise density, so you can have seven stories there as of right and um, have it be integrated beautifully into the neighborhood, across Washington, you cross into the Flamingo Park neighborhood, which is you know, a gorgeous residential neighborhood with an enormous park smack in the middle of it. So I would like to think differently about the future of Washington. And I agree with you, and, and, and I think that Washington Avenue you know, merits for further discussion, um, perhaps even seeing um, that, that 0.5 FAR incentive you know, to to continue encouraging the residential uh, use. You know, do we study the possibility? Maybe, maybe, maybe doing a, you know doing away with a 0.5 FAR incentive for a hotel, or t or telling a developer if you don't use that 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 0.5 FAR incentive for a hotel, maybe we up the incentive for residential. Uh, that will do a bigger incentive on residential. Uh, than what we have for it for 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 hotel and also studying if we take away the FAR incentive for hotel uses what other type of commercial uses that are necessary to support a local community uh, could we incentivize with it uh, because at the end of the day Washington Avenue is a commercial corridor uh, and, and in order for a community to be able to thrive around it, you need to provide housing. You also need to provide, like you mentioned, a grocery store. We really don't have a grocery store on the east side of the, of, of the island or more educational institutions or, more, or, or other types of services that end users of residential housing will need. Commissioner Bob, you're recognized. Thank you. So, you know, I encourage us to think a little further afield than just what we've done historically. I don't think... Um, Washington Avenue or really any of our neighborhoods need to have, you know, either small scale residential um, or big box retail. Like when you go to Fifth Avenue, uh, Fifth Avenue, if you go down to um, Fifth and Alton, you see these big boxes full of chain stores. We've got a Target coming to North Beach. You go to venerable cities like Boston and New York mm -hmm. where you've got um, very serviceable retail on the ground floor, and it could be multiple doors, you know, a large-scale store, um, supermarkets and home goods stores that, that span multiple doorways, and above them there are residential rental or, or um, you know, apartments for sale that, you know, you go up past the first floor, and then you've got three or four or five stories above. Um, so it's not, I, what I don't want to see is Washington Avenue become a destination for big box developments. Right. I, w I would want to see horizontal utilizing the the landscape that's there, um, but perhaps you know. May, so maybe it's not a a height um, advantage, but maybe I don't know currently because this isn't something I think we've ever had to contemplate on the planning board. In my three years that I was on it, um, w what currently limits what can go into um, contiguous adjacent properties if they are put together. Um, and maybe that's something we look at instead, incentivizing yeah. it that way. All right, so um, let's, let's, I'm gonna recognize Commissioner Magazine, but before I recognize Commissioner Magazine, I wanna make sure that we get a motion before the body. Uh, and, it, and it seems like what we're looking at today 
is uh, making a recommendation to the city commission on repealing uh, the FAR incentive on the CD2 districts along Alton Road and, uh, and in those CD2 districts abutting residential multifamily uh, in North Beach. Um, and that includes uh, the areas uh, in, on East uh, Normandy Drive and those uh, along Collins Avenue. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Director? That's correct. Okay, is there a motion uh, from the body on this? May I ask a point of clarification? Yes. And would take Washington separately? Well, well what, I w what I think would be proper is for us to, to continue the Washington Avenue portion of it to bring back a separate item to, okay. uh, to the Land Use Committee so that we can further discuss uh, uh, you know, the residential incentives on Washington Avenue and what type of commercial, other commercial uses might be necessary to really encourage and attract uh, and, and support residential uses on, on, on Washington Avenue. So perhaps we can include as part of, of the motion and continuing the Washington Avenue part uh, to, a for, to, a, uh, to, to a different meeting of the Land Use Committee where staff could come back to us with further analysis on that. I would, I would make that motion. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second on that motion? Just a point of clarity. So this on is the motion. Yeah, and this is just for Alton that we're Alton. So the CD two districts fronting Alton Road, uh, and then as well in North Beach, uh, which include the 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 areas East Normandy Drive, abutting the the residential multifamily districts, and then along uh, Collins Avenue, uh, in North Beach. Okay, a second. Okay, and then and then that includes the deferral of the Washington Avenue part uh, to, to to get further vetting uh, from the planning department. And I would actually say it'd be great to hear from the planning board as well. We have such a great uh, planning board and great uh, uh, you know group of dedicated professionals serving there. It'd be great to get some feedback from them on the Washington Avenue side, Madam Vice Chair. And I would also suggest it might be a worthwhile exercise to include. Um, the director of the Washington Avenue bid, bid. to see, yep. you know, what he's hearing, feeling, what he's working towards, et cetera. Okay, so we have an I we we have a motion moved by the vice chair, seconded by 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 Commissioner Suarez. I'm going to recognize Commissioner Magazine on the motion. Uh, before we call a roll on this item, we're also going to open up the public hearing. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly uh, with what uh, both of my colleagues just said. Um, specifically focus on Washington Avenue, I would prefer to lead with a carrot rather than a stick, right? And essentially what we do is we all go out and envision what we would like to see Washington Avenue look like and then create code and zoning to facilitate that. Yep. I know, uh, and this is music to my ears because I, I truly think we're all aligned. I don't think the pathway forward is more infill hotel development. So what do we do? We either keep stagnant or scale back the hotel incentives, but then we increase the residential FAR. Exactly. The exact type of uh, urban planning that I'd like to see on Washington Avenue would essentially be ground floor retail to keep consistent with the commercial corridor and then residential full-time residential housing on top. We okay. can look at side setbacks, height, FAR, um, but that is that helps kind of push out the spring break problem. It's essentially full-time programming. If I have one question for Tom, if I could, just on this amendment. On Fifth Street, we've actually seen some hotel development along there, even though it's in CD1. Is there incentives for hotels there? I, I, I just want to be sure that we're thinking comprehensively there. We, not that there's anything wrong with those hotels, the Urbanica properties, um, but can, continuing this theme of wanting to disincentivize hotels, it was just, it was strange to me to see two hotels pop up in such a remote area that is more consistent with residential there. So is there some sort of rhyme or reason, or more importantly, an incentive that essentially encouraged that? So uh, the area that you're talking about along Fifth Street is zone CPS2. The properties that are between 4th and 5th and between 5th and 6th from Alton to Washington are in the CPS2 zoning district. The CPS2 district not only allows hotels, but it also provides a height incentive for hotels. You can go up to 75 feet for hotel uses west of Lenox Avenue. And so some hotel developments may have sought to take advantage of that. And that's in the CPS2 district? Correct. Uh, and the CPS2 district goes from 4th Street to 6th Street? That's correct. And that is where we have a height incentive? Correct. I think that's... 
you know, something we should be looking at. And I just, what other incentives exist um, besides uh, FAR and height? Parking. parking. There are parking incentives. incentives. Okay. When the item on Washington Avenue comes back, I want a list of every single incentive on for, for, for hotel development, height, parking, and any other uh, incentive that may exist. Because FAR is only one part of it, uh, but I think uh, we should be looking at these, at these others as well. Okay, uh, the item's been moved, seconded. Uh, are there members of the public present in the chambers wishing to speak on the item? Uh, I see Wayne Roberts uh, virtually. Wayne, uh, welcome, you have two minutes to speak. Thank you, Alex. I want, to, I want to congratulate you on bringing this issue on Alton Road um, back to, uh, the, uh, to the time before the last commission, because it was a big mistake adding all that FAR to that road, uh, because it is, it is residential in nature, um, and the, the outcome was going to be draconian. And stopping it now would at least limit the damage that was done. Um, so I applaud you. Uh, very resident-centric. Thank you. Um, as for uh, population, I want to I make sure that everybody understands that the population in Miami Beach in 2024 is 78,000. It was uh, 80, 80, uh, 2000 in 2020, but it's dropped further. Um, in 2014, it was 90,000. It is now 78,000. We've lost 12,000 residents. And so I, I agree with Joseph Magazine that we should uh, offer incentives for residential and, and try to get more residential, preferably middle-class residential uh, that we're losing. Um, and one avenue that we haven't discussed, you know, uh, instead of FER, which damages our city, or lack of parking, uh, why not offer tax incentives if that's legal um, so that uh, the cost, especially for a rental if it's a developer, would be less going forward in their, in their actuary tables. So um, that hasn't been discussed yet in our, you know, as an option for incentivizing middle-class housing which is really part of the Live Local Act. And the problem with Live Local Act is, and I, the biggest problem with that, that whole act is that you could put 40% um, of you, units at 400. Mr. Robert, Mr. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, your, your, your points resonate. And I gotta tell you, when I was a, um, when I was recently, when I was freshly elected, newly elected, um, it's hard to believe it was two years ago, um, it's something that I looked at the, the uh, tax incentives, um, and we're limited by, by by law. And I was even trying to see, well, can we do a reimbursement? Uh, on, and and I was even told, you know, you're even limited to do anything, any type of tax-related assessment, any type um, incentive. I'm sorry, not assessment, incentive. Uh, anything that is based on on taxes were very limited. And I don't know, Nick, if you recall this, but it was one of the first initiatives I tried working on as a, as a young commissioner. Before, be, before I had all the gray hairs I have now. <laughs> that, that, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. We can only establish um, one millage rate for, for properties in the city. Um, there are new incentives under the, uh, the, under the Live Local Act for, for qualifying projects, um, but that would have to be, I, I think it's, it's, it's affordable or workforce up to 120% AMI. But that's, but those, th those are incentives where, where there you have a large portion of the housing inventory that are pretty much going to be tax exempt, where now you might even end up with a concurrency situation where you are increasing population, uh, the amount of people coming in, but now you don't have a revenue stream through which to fund uh, police services, sanitation services, fire response services, uh, even, even uh, you know, schools. I know schools around the state are concerned by the impact that Live Local could potentially have because it's gonna increase the amount of students in classrooms, but, but, but you're not getting the same revenue stream to fund for teachers and seats in the, in the classrooms. Uh, Commissioner Bond, you recognize. 
Thank, thank you. I was just going to say that I also, uh, you know, only three months ago when I was elected, um, one of my first uh, forays into this issue was doing some kind of tax um, incentivization to stagger when taxes get paid and, yeah. and you know, different types of um, machinations that way. And we we're just preempted from doing a lot of things that um, are good for our city, unfortunately. Thank you, Commissioner. And so let me, uh, before we close the public hearing, I see Mitch Novick. Uh, Mitch, you're recognized. I think good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Yes, you have two minutes. Welcome. That, thank you. When I arrived here 36 years ago, my neighborhood, the Ocean Drive, Collins, Washington neighborhood was thriving with residents. I uh, firmly believe the circus zoning along Ocean Drive allowing for open air entertainment is what decimated my neighborhood to what's become a, or the byproduct being the T-shirt shops, the smoke shops, the liquor store and all the filth and trash we see on the streets. I applaud the conversation and the tone of your conversation today. I uh, would strongly urge you to do whatever is necessary to bring back a strong residential and diverse residential base to my part of town. Thank you again. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, any other members of the public wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none in person and none virtually, I'm going to close the public hearing. Mr. Mr. Attorney, we have a motion that's been made, that's been moved and seconded. I see the director has his hand raised, and then we're going to call the roll because we're going to close this item. So, Mr. Director, you're recognized, and then we're going to call the roll. Okay, I just wanted to clarify the motion, Mr. Chair. Um, in terms of the um, continuance of the Washington Avenue evaluation, uh, before we bring it back to the Land Use Committee, um, you wanted to have us set a discussion item at the planning board to get the planning board input on this? Yes. And then we will reach out to the president of the Washington Avenue bid to get their input as well. Yes. And so I would suggest we continue this to the June meeting so that we would have enough time to do this. Yes. Um, so. And I would also no like a comprehensive analysis of any other incentive, um, you know, that we, have, that, that we apply besides FAR, the height incentives, the parking incentives uh, throughout our zoning districts that uh, that that encourage the development uh, of of hotel uses. Noted. Okay. With that, Mr. Attorney, let's call the roll. Okay, Commissioner Dominguez. Yes. Commissioner Suarez. Yes. Vice Chair Bot. Yes. And Chairman Fernandez. Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. With that, let's call up items two, three, and four together, and we're taking these uh, these items together because they're, they're of the same theme. Uh, so Mr. Director, uh, please read them into the record. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'll read all three into the record. Um, first is item two, discuss different approaches to limiting the proliferation of new hotel development by establishing a cap on the maximum number of hotel rooms that may be developed in particular zoning districts, limiting the density of new hotel rooms in the city and or other possible amendments to the land development regulations. Item number three, review zoning district regulations where hotel development is permitted, including any districts where hotels are incentivized, and discuss whether amendments to the land development regulations are appropriate to limit future hotel or transient development and incentivize long-term residential development. Item number five, discuss amending the hotel approval process. Thank you, Mr. Director. I sponsored item number two, and Commissioner Magazine, I, I believe, was the main sponsor in item number three and five. Uh, and so since these are very similarly uh, themed items, I'm going to recognize Commissioner Magazine to, uh, to present these items. Uh, well, thank you, Chair. And I think it actually exactly ties into uh, the request that you just talked about uh, with the Planning Director at the end of last item. And essentially, that is an analysis, so it doesn't spring up on a case-by-case uh, -case basis of what are those incentives? Why are we getting all of these hotels and lack of residential housing? It's zoning and code is just like the tax policy, right? You, you have different tax incentives to create behavior that you want to see. And to the extent that the behavior that we see is just the over -pro proliferation of hotels, then that tells us, well, it's because there's incentives that are encouraging that right that is the the best economic use for people to go forward and what i would like to see and it seems like all of the colleagues are aligned is 
determine exactly what those incentives are, where they are, and flip those incentives to create the city that we want to see. Um, in terms of item number five, discuss amending the hotel approval process. I I'm not to the same level as, uh, as my colleague, whose opinion I, I greatly uh, respect, Commissioner Rosen Gonzalez. In fact, uh, during her previous run, uh, it was outside of City Hall where she talked about the hotel moratorium and sold me and my parents. Um, but uh, what I think it is uh, maybe kind of a happy medium is uh, following something where New York City has implemented where hotel approval has to essentially come to uh, the commission. And I wouldn't want it anything overly onerous like a six sevens vote, but uh, let's face it, some of the best projects that Commissioner D Dominguez rightfully pointed out are oceanfront hotel projects. That, that area is becoming the, uh, the French Riviera of our city, and I don't think that we want to limit things like the Amman, the Bulgari, or the Rosewood, but we would want to limit some infill housing or infill hotel development that could then be better incentivized as residential. So until we get to the point where all of those incentives are flipped, I think it would be good to see ho new hotel development have to come before the commission. So, Mr. Chair, thank you very much for including me in uh, items yes. that are very near and dear to me. I'll hand it back over to you all. Th thank you, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, and I and and I commend your your line of thinking on this because th this is one of those issues that I think uh, go directly to the quality of life of our residents. I think a lot of times residents elect us thinking that we have a direct impact on some of this type of development. Uh, and while we have indirect impact on it through tax amendments and zoning regulations that we can put into, into play, we really don't have a direct vote or say in the approval or disapproval of hotel developments in, in our city. Uh, and, I, and I believe that your points are, 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 are completely valid and I agree with your position uh, that, that in those areas where we are going to continue to allow hotel as a main permitted use in our zoning district, uh, that those approvals come from the city commission. It is of that importance. I think, I think it's of that such great concern that we just shouldn't be delegating that approval to an unelected uh, body, to a body that is not hearing directly from the electorate and from the voters the way that we do. We've been entrusted by the electorate to preserve the quality of life of our residents. And I think this is when we speak to our voters, to our residents, this goes to the heart of their concerns. Um, together with increasing the housing inventory, making sure that our population doesn't continue to dwindle as, we, as we've seen in, 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 in the past. So I join with you uh, in, in, in support of that. But I think together with that, um, we need to look at the zoning districts where we allow, as of right, hotel development. And do we want to look into, into certain zoning districts that might be abutting residential uses and saying, okay, these districts perhaps should not have hotel uses as of right. For example, to me, a low-hanging fruit is the CD3 district along 41st Street. And, and, and my, my, my office has distributed to all the members uh, an enlarged map of, of the zoning districts in our, in our city. But when you look at the CD3 district along 41st Street, what you see are, it's, it's a district bounded by residential uses, by RS districts. To me, there shouldn't be any hotel as of right in any area abutting single family residential. It's just inconsistent with the quality of life that we want to promote for, 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 for our residents. I think every, even areas when we look into the RPS3 and the RPS4 areas around south, south of 5th, Commissioner Suarez, this is, these are areas that you are very familiar with. Um, when we look at the CPS2 districts, you know, the, from 4th Street to 6th Street, you know, we have a, a discussion item um, that has to do with the um, with the sixth with the sixth uh, street uh, overlay. 
specifically to preserve the quality of life and the character of the Flamingo Park neighborhood. Do we really want to allow, as of right, hotels on 6th Street where right across the street we have multifamily residential? We already have one approved on 6th Street at the corner of Lenox, and I think on the east end we already have another one uh, that's been developed already on the east end on uh, a near, near Washington Avenue. But in between, do we want to see more pro pro proliferation of hotel uses right across the street from where our residents live? And I think we should identify these areas where we may want to say no longer in these areas as a main permitted use, so that, so, that, so that we then direct it in towards the areas that are more appropriate for it. And Mr. Director, I just you know, want to get your, your, your input on that, because if we look at these areas, like the CD3 district around 41st Street, the RPS3 and RPS4 districts around south of 5th, and the CPS2 districts around uh, 4th and 6th Street, if we, if, if we look you know, limiting hotels there as, as, as a main use. Which areas then remain uh, hotels as, as a main use? Because we want to make sure we limit in certain areas, but we continue to allow in other areas. The areas that would remain um, for hotel usage would include um, the CD2 districts along Alton Road and Washington Avenue, the um, MXC district, which is um, Collins and Ocean Drive, and the RM3 and RM2 districts in the city, and that's primarily along Collins Avenue, and you have RM3 and RM2 between roughly 24th and 40th Street, uh, RM2 on the west side of Collins Avenue to Indian Creek, RM3 on the ocean side, and then RM3 on the ocean side north of, of 40th Street up to 72nd Street. Okay. I want to know how my colleagues feel, f feel about this uh, because this is important policy that we're discussing. Uh, I, think, I, I think this could perhaps be one of the most consequential uh, policies that we can discuss as it relates to the quality of life of our residents and making sure that we preserve the fabric of, of residential quality of life in Miami Beach. Uh, Commissioner Bott. Um, Director, could you clarify what you think red? Your mic. Oops, sorry. Could you, thank you. Could you clarify what this big red? That district is the town center core area, okay. and that's the area where the voters approved an FAR increase in 2017. Right. Okay, I just want to make sure that I was reading this right. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I was reading that right. And so my understanding is that basically anything goes up there. Hotels are permitted in that area, and one other area, and I apologize, I apologize, I neglected to mention. Hotels would also be permitted in the CD3 district along Lincoln Road. So I would like to see this um, this discussion include that town center area. Um, I think that uh, our prior, our previous commissions got a little carried away, and um, there are going to be repercussions that residents of North Beach are going to be dealing with in terms of traffic and infrastructure for decades to come. And I don't think we want to add to that. I think this is a really important discussion. Anybody who's heard me on the planning board and um, and other places has heard me talk about planning for the city we want, not the city we're in at the moment. So I think this is um, fantastic that we're doing this holistically. Um, I would like to, as we talk about incentivizing residential use um, and residential supporting commercial use, I would like to have included in that those discussions of what that looks like, um, incentive, incentivizing people to proffer um, no short-term rentals, uh, because that's basically the only way we can accept this. And I don't want it to become crazy. We don't. Nobody needs more 20 or 50-story towers in the city. Um, but I do think that there needs to be some thought as to. Um, this this comment that was made by the report, whether or not we like it, but you know, if you dampen down the hotel inventory, even though we have a ton of it, uh, the reality is that short-term rentals will become more opportunistic, and um, the hard work of getting new residential units built.
could work against us. So I think that needs to be a very robust part of the discussion and that when projects are approved, that is you know, something that, that weighs into the approval process. And it shouldn't just be, um, as it has been in years past, um, I will proffer short-term rentals to get more capacity at my restaurant or be able to have speakers on the terrace of my restaurant. It needs to be quality, you know, the meat of quality of life issues. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair, um, and your and your points are are very well taken. Just for just for clarity, because when we look at the North Beach Town Center, we have TC one, TC two, uh, where there where where hotel development is allowed as a right, but then you have the TC three district where hotels are allowed as a conditional use. Are you looking uh, to to limit the hotel development only in TC one and TC two, where it's as of right? Uh, are you trying to create a parity with the TC3 district where the conditional use exists, just, just, just so that we get in proper order here? I mean, the director can speak more knowledgeably about this than I can, but I know that in town center, um, you know, we have, we have eight by six square blocks where we have 13 pretty high density um, projects approved and over 500 um, uh, micro units which can be used as short-term rentals and other units that aren't micro units which are also allowed to be short-term rentals as of right. I want to do whatever we can. And I understand we can't change what's already developed, but I want to batten down the hatches on anything mm -hmm. further mm -hmm. in that area. Okay, so so we have I think we have consensus uh, as, it, as it relates to the CD3 districts, the RPS uh, 3 and 4, the CPS 2 districts. Uh, it sounds like uh, the TC1, TC2, TC3 districts. Uh, what that would leave behind, and it's important for people to realize, we're not saying no hotel development. We're, what we're saying is identifying the areas where it is appropriate uh, and in proper character to have hotel development. We're seeing areas, uh, certain areas of, of CD2 districts, uh, the TCs, um, not the TCC, um, the MXC district. We know the MXC district is more, is more appropriate uh, for this. RM3 and the RM2 districts, of course, with the exception of West Avenue and, and Palm View, we have the, the uh, RM1, uh, certain RM1 uh, districts allow uh, hotel development. Only uh, along Harding Avenue, and only if they uh, renovate and restore a contributing building. And so, and so, how many people have actually used that incentive? I don't have the exact number, but quite a few. Quite, quite a few, few have done either suite hotels or they've done uh, short-term rentals of apartments, which are also permitted in that RM1 district along Harding Avenue. And, and that, that to me is concerning because when we're talking about RM1, I mean, that is like bringing it. You know, could we, the way we did it with the last item, could we maybe do a deeper dive into that? Because on the one hand, it is fantastic to incentivize adaptive reuse and protecting those buildings. And I know the folks who worked very hard to get that um, done, and that was the goal. But at the same time, I also know from neighbors who live there now that those are some of the most problematic neighbors in, the, in that area. And so, Again, we're not trying to put people out of business, but perhaps we can re-examine those incentives to switch them from um, uh, hotel use to full-time residential without taking away the things that make it attractive. And, um, per and, per and perhaps they should also be, if we allow anything, should be conditional, um, you know, with you know, with approvals, you know, from 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 a higher body. I I, I have it gives me heartburn to. To, to what's that? Ajuda. <laughs> gives me heartburn to think that um, that in any RM area, we are allowing hotels. We're encouraging them. Encouraging them. Yep. That that gives me heartburn. And frankly, I, I don't. I forgive me. I didn't catch it. If you said that the the area just off of Forty First, like I can't imagine why that is attractive. The CD three districts. Yeah. I, like, why yeah. is that? 
I can see maybe one block when you're getting closer to the beach, but not all along that corridor. And so, and, 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 and that's perhaps, should we perhaps be looking at maybe a cap? In certain zoning districts, like for example, you know, I, you know, I see, I see 41st Street. You know, it is a commercial corridor. It is a main thoroughfare. You have public transportation then that, that's there. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you know, medical uses. Uh, you have Mount Sinai. It's not unheard of for a hospital to have a hotel within closed facilities to a hospital. It's, it's actually pretty common but a hotel, not a street of hotels. Um, you know, it's, I get, I get hesitation when I see that all of 41st Street is zoned for hotels, but perhaps having a, a cap on the amount of hotels, of uh, the amount of rooms that are approved for development in that district. Yes, Commissioner Bott. Um, so Director Mooney, I, I I can't think of any hotel development. I, I, I lived just blocks from there um, for, for 13 years. That is not a hotbed of hotel development interests. Interest. Um, how long has it been zoned? Do you know that way? The, 40, the 41st Street area has been CD3 since at least 1989. And so hotels have been permitted on that street since so, at least 1989. So since 1989, I don't, I don't know what it looked like then. I moved there in 2001. It has been a little run down at the heels since 2001 at a minimum. Um, we've had a 41st Street committee for a number of years trying to figure out how to best um, bring it. it Moribund is a bit strong, but a, a, you know an underutilized um, corridor to life. Clearly, hotels have not been a thing because nobody's really done it yet. So I would say let's get rid of that and, and again, plan for the city we want. And maybe this is another <coughs> deep dive opportunity where we have a conversation with the 41st Street folks, see what, they're, what they want, what they're missing, what they would wish for in the ideal world. I don't know um, if part of their deliberations have been contemplating what they could build if they had no, you know, no zoning pre-existing conditions. So let's, let's go to the, the drafting table and figure out what's the best use here and then write the code to, to catch that up. And, so, and, and so, so in essence, we would be saying, um, we would be saying no hotel allowed as a main permitted use in CD3 uh, along 41st Street. And just to go back on RPS three and four, which are the areas of South of South of Fifth, the CD2, I mean, CPS2 district that's between 4th and 6th Street, um, and then in the North Beach Town Centers. I just want to make sure that that's, that that's where we stand right now. Yeah. Okay. I think we've got plenty of hotel use. And that, and that would then leave on, on the table, for example, you know, the commercial performance uh, districts, CPS 1, 3, and 4, that would leave the uh, CCC districts, uh, that would leave the MXC districts, that would leave the CD2 districts, uh, but remove the others as a main permitted use. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, com yeah, Commissioner, Commissioner Dominguez, and then Commissioner Suarez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I had a, a couple questions about this item um, because we're making some pretty substantial changes and there's a 41st Street committee that lives there and has been breathing this area. Has anybody consulted with them? What do they recommend? Well, I think, I think as a body we can, we can always uh, send this for their input. I would say we should send this to their input. I think we should also send it to the planning board for, for, for their input. Uh, but we're the elected body. We're the body that was elected by the city commission, and we convened the task force, and we certainly want their input. And I think it's proper uh, to yeah, bring it up for, for 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 consideration. And I would like to uh, make sure that before the item comes back, uh, either to to this body or to the city commission, we have the opportunity to to, to get their feedbacks uh, on this. I see we have our assistant city manager Raquel Williams. I wasn't uh, oh, I'd like you to well, 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 I just want to. 
because you bring yeah. up a good point, uh, but I just want to ask you, has, has the 41st committee, 41st Street committee chimed in on hotel uses and their vision, whether it's something that they want to see or not see as part of the vision for the future of 41st Street? Good afternoon, Honorable Chair and Commissioners Raquel Williams, Assistant City Manager. I just wanted to chime in on the stakeholder groups uh, on 41st Street, and I wanted to highlight the newly formed 41st Street Business Improvement District as another potential entity that the city may want to engage with. I do know from the perspective of the 41st Street Committee, of which the Economic Development Department is a liaison, that the committee has been interested in mixed-use development opportunity adjacent to 41st Street, and they have made motions or recommendations to that effect. They have not specifically highlighted hotel uses, uh, but I think that's something that could be explored at a future meeting of the committee. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Dominguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, just to wrap it up, that would be my biggest and most important concern is to make sure that the stakeholders that af actually live in that area have buy-in because shoving it down their throats, if there isn't buy-in, is unacceptable, even if we are the elected body. Thank you, Commissioner Dominguez. Commissioner Suarez, you're recognized. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you Mr. Chair. So the along Washington Avenue, the CD2, it, so the, we would take that out of consideration? Uh, is that... Is that the direction? Right now, this, what what we're taking out of consideration with the last item uh, was the FAR incentive that we have uh, on on CD2 uh, there for for hotel developments, but still um, keeping keeping it there because it's 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 an area that abuts the the mixed use entertainment. It's not directly uh, you know in enveloped around the residential uses. So, so uh, look, I have I have. A uh, an opinion on this, a different opinion. I, I think if we're going to get Washington Avenue out of out of the mess it's in now, with vape shops, pizza slice. I mean, I, I mean the way I would envision Washington Avenue is is purely residential, uh, moving in the next 10, 20 years, and that. I mean, I think you hit it on the head. You know, what we're doing now is going to set a precedent for decades to come. And you know, I, I think I think the only way Washington Avenue is ever going to get out of its, uh, I guess, rut is, is through good residential development, similar to like the courts in South of Fifth or uh, the Cosmopolitan. N nothing high has great uh, units that families can can move into, and you know, I think that's. I, I don't know how my colleagues feel about that, but. You know, I, I think just moving away from the hotel model on Washington Avenue specifically over the next 10, 20 years is a long-term goal for really reshaping um, the brand of Miami Beach along Washington Avenue. And so I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about that. I, I, I personally think it, it could be a, a goal. Um, I do think that with everything, to avoid unintended consequences, you need to say areas where you absolutely don't want something, uh, and then areas where it might be more, more, more appropriate, but you're still going to have to get an approval from the city commission. Um, and I and I think that that's where the checks and balances come. Uh, I I think I think Washington Avenue is in need of economic activity. Um, and I don't want to say we absolutely are going to rule out hotel uses from from Washington Avenue, or rather leave the opportunity for there to be maybe there's a high end hotel that wants to come in and redevelop, uh, you know, one of our historic assets there. I rather see that than a property stay there, you know, continuing to have the vape shop, the t-shirt shop, the pizza shop, and continue with the status quo, but allow for there to be a city commission approval so that so that so that we can create the catalyst uh, for it. So I think it's it's a very it's a very delicate uh, balance um, of of saying definitely not in this these districts. We're not crazy about it in these other districts like Washington Avenue, but if you bring us something really good and enticing, we might support it because we want to support the economy and the redevelopment of this of these areas, and we don't want to lose historic assets. Right. And what comes to mind, 
you know, off the bat is the Gautam Hotel. And, you know, that, that uh, came in with the best intentions, and now the residents are complaining about it. And, and, yeah, right. And so, you know, I think, I, I, so for this particular, I guess for this discussion, we want we to wanted say what we're going to limit hotel uses on moving forward. And that the zoning eventually districts. The zoning districts. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, look, you, you know, we, we can have a, the, the problem is sometimes when, when you have like a really hot hotel, it, it, it really, it, it doesn't jive with the, the, the neighborhood, unfortunately. Um, and it, it can be a, um, a residential complaint where it, it always happens similar to the Good Time Hotel. And so, you know, I, I would I would be in favor of of prohibiting any more hotels on Washington Avenue and incentivizing residential uh, development. And I think that's really the long term approach that h- how Washington Avenue is going to be- become, you know, the next South of Fifth, yeah, um, or um, your Sunset Harbor. And and I mean, it's it's perfect spot because it's right next to the beach. Uh, you know, you, you put a couple of Whole Foods there, and <laughs> you have you have a a great residential area, and 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 not that's not to say that that's going to hurt the economy. You know, more people there, they're going to drive less, they're going to visit the shops, um, and and spend their and their monies in the local economy. So I don't think it'd be so much of a, a hit to uh, the economy. I think it might be a plus, and and it's a good long term approach. Thank you, Commissioner Suarez, and I, and I think it's something that we can consider. I think maybe we don't have to take a position right now on Washington Avenue because we did defer to a future meeting uh, the discussion on the FAR incentives, uh, perhaps you know creating further incentives for residential uses on Washington Avenue and what other types of commercial uses that, that can support residential uh, quality of life. Uh, could we incentivize on on Washington Avenue, and perhaps it might be more more appropriate to to consider, you know, uh, this discussion about whether we even want to continue to have um, hotels as a permitted use on Washington Avenue to the at that at such time that we bring back that discussion on on FAR uses. That way, we can have a more holistic conversation about mm-hmm. about Washington. Uh, so I would I would uh, propose that I see the city attorney I think has his hand raised. I I just have a just a, a comment I'd like to make if yeah. the um, if the if the city commission does amend the code to to allow the commission to require the commission to approve individual hotel projects, those will be quasi judicial approvals, much like the the land use bur- boards uh, are currently empowered mm-hmm. to make. And so we would need to develop review criteria. It could be it could be similar to the conditional use criteria. That the planning board applies, um, and then the the city commission would need to hold public hearing on public hearings on those applications, and and your 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 decisions would need to be made based on the criteria and supported by the evidence. And and Mr. Attorney, could we uh, transfer back to the city commission, perhaps, you know, or or not, or or maybe make the uh, planning board's determination on hotel uses advisory to the city commission? Like for example, I know at my at, at the county. The planning board acts as an advisory body, but then their 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 determination is uh, is then considered and vetted uh, by the board of county commissioners in their in their zoning meetings. Perhaps we could do something similar here, where on these transient uses like hotel uses, uh, the planning board acts in an advisory capacity, where then the city commission actually then ratifies the approval or disapproval. Of the application, you could do it that way, and just bifurcate that that specific use of hotel uses. Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Bond. I, I think we're moving to quarterly land use meetings, right, to review everything at the same time. So, couldn't the hotel approvals be put in as part of that process? If I mean, I can't imagine we're going to have eight million applications for hotels, but um, if it if it the, um, through the chair, Commissioner, uh, uh, com- I was about to say Commissioner Mooney. Mr. Mooney, <laughs> you're, you're, you're recognized. Through the Thanks, cha- Mr. Chair, I apologize. <laughs> um, the quarterly zoning cycles are for land development regulation amendments. And so if the commission was going to um, make a final decision on hotel uses with the planning board being advisory, 
you could establish any process you see fit. If you want to do it quarterly, you could do it quarterly. If you want to do it as the applications are submitted, you could do that. Yeah. And but but uh, I think I think to the point of the vice chair, which I think is a very good point. Uh, one of the reasons why, why we created these cycles was that we didn't want our city commission meetings to become zoning meetings. Uh, we wanted to be able to focus on other issues of quality of life, sanitation, parks resources, public safety, and we didn't want to have a zoning dominant agenda, which is where the uh, cycles made sense. Uh, I, and, I, and I agree with the, uh, with the vice chair that perhaps these could be integrated into, into the cycle uh, so that so that you know we have quarterly uh, meetings in which we consider these land use matters and in those you know we can uh, consider you know the the hotel ap applications. I think it's something that we should probably include as part of of our of our motion today. So, Mr. Director, guide us. Which are uh, the areas of the city that we are looking to continue to allow? hotel uses as a main permitted use and those where we want to say definitely, you know, we don't want to continue there so that we can make the recommendation to the city commission. The areas based upon the discussion today, the areas that you are looking at to remove hotel as a permitted use include the CD3 district along 41st Street, the RPS3 and RPS4 districts on the south of 5th area, the CPS2 district, which is between 4th Street and 6th Street, um, bounded by roughly um, Lenox Avenue and um, Washington Avenue, and then the North Beach Town Center districts, which would include the TCC, TC1 through uh, TC3 um, districts. The areas where hotels would remain would include um, the MXE district, um, the CD2 districts, uh, I know Washington Avenue is going to come back for further study. Um, the RM3 districts, uh, the RM2 districts, the CD3 district along uh, Lincoln Road, um, and then the CD2 district and the MXC district that exist in uh, North Beach. Okay, thank you. Uh, so is there a motion to proceed with that, with that recommendation to vet it? I think with, uh, with the 41st Street bid, uh, that it also, I believe, with the North Beach CRA, uh, and then and then bring uh, an item back for consideration to the City Commission. And and getting um, the Washington Avenue bid. Be Washington well. Avenue bid as well. I make that motion. Okay, it's been moved by the Vice Chair. Is there a second on the motion? Okay, second by 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 Commissioner Suarez. Do we want to include as part of this motion as well uh, the? that then in the areas where it remains as a main permitted use, uh, the, um, the review by the planning board uh, as, as, as an advisory to the city commission, but then the ratification by the city commission. Do we want to include that as part of the motion? Or, or do a separate motion? Okay, so on the main motion. Okay, we have a motion and a, and, and, and a second on the, on, on the first motion on the zoning districts. And and just so I'm clear, Mr. Chairman, is that, would you like that to come back to committee with, you know, after after staff has reached out to the 41st Street bid and the North Beach CRA? Okay, yes, let's bring that back to the committee. Okay. Uh, is that fine with, with, with you? So that would be, they would, they would go to the North Beach CRA, 41st Street bid, and the Washington Avenue bid. On what we what we want to do as far as uh, the zoning removing. districts, yes, and then bring it back to, to next month. To, yeah, uh, I'm fine bringing it back next month. I think a lot of it depends when these meetings, when these committees meet. Yeah, we um, can we can through the chair, um, we can try to bring it back to you May 1st um, if we run into a problem scheduling with one of those um, stakeholder groups. We could always recommend that it be continued to the following month so that we can get their input. Okay. Uh, um, That's a long time. I, I want to have this back at, at, at the committee by, by, by May 1st, uh, well, the well, latest. Well, well, can't we discuss this at a commission meeting? Because it's going to be referred anyways to commission. And by then, uh, you know, we're going to... What is the will of the body? Do we want to bring this back to committee? Do we feel comfortable sending this to the city commission with the input and the feedback of the individual uh, 
committees that we're sending it to? It would take two readings, right? Anyways? Well, through the chair and procedurally, um, because this was not a dual referral, this committee would eventually need to make a recommendation to the full city commission to refer an LDR amendment to the planning board. And then uh, once the city commission as a body makes that referral to the planning board, we would take it to the next planning board meeting, okay. and then it would go within the established zoning cycle. Thank you, Mr. Director. So, so let's have it go to the city commission. Uh, uh, we can place the, the uh, referral on the agenda once we get the feedback. Uh, because again, this is just to initiate a referral. We're not bringing an ordinance for first reading or anything like that. So since this is only to initiate a referral, uh, we can go ahead and go to the committees just so that we can uh, make it a little bit more, less bureaucratic. Yes. There you go. <laughs> um, so, 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 so with that, that motion has been moved. It's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. I think by acclamation, we've got that. Okay. The uh, second uh, uh, motion on the table, I think, was going to relate to uh, hotel development related items, making the planning board's uh, position advisory in nature with a ratification by the city commission. Mr. Attorney, you're recognized. Yes, and on that one, I would suggest if the, if the committee's inclined to make a recommendation, is keep that in committee so that, so that uh, a process and review criteria could be developed before, um, before the city commission refers anything to the planning board, the committee may want to look at that criteria closely. Okay. Well, well wouldn't it be the planning board that is going to be setting the criteria? Typically, the, the land use committee would make sort of the initial policy recommendations, something as detailed as, because this is detailed. Got it. And this is only for Washington Avenue? No, no, no. This, this, is, this, is, this is for in those areas where hotels are, will remain as a main permitted use. Um, that um, that the city commission, well, main main permitted use or, or or even conditional use because technically hotels are only go to the planning board when it's when it's a conditional use right now. Now it would expand that and say, when it's a conditional use or or even a main permitted use, uh, that they that it needs um, when it's conditional planning board and city commission, or when it's um, when it's a main permitted use just from the city commission. Um, j yeah, through the chair. Um, I mean, won't we be setting ourselves up for like hundreds of applications? I, I don't see how 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 this would set us up. How so? Well, I mean, um, so every hotel that's not permitted in these districts would have to go through us, basically, the planning board and us. Yes. And uh, Tom, roughly, how many potential? I mean, well, how do you see? How many do you see that coming? There. It really depends upon how the development evolves. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is market driven. Um, there are some years where we do get a lot of hotel applications. I would imagine, and this would obviously be further developed for the commission to review before sending it to the planning board, but I would imagine what you're talking about is new hotel development, either mm -hmm. a conversion of a non-hotel use to hotel or ground up construction or an addition. It wouldn't be like the renovation of an existing hotel. And so you, you could see a fair amount of applications that, that would meet that criteria. Um, oftentimes, if the hotel project has been developed to an extent that people are comfortable with it, it may move quickly. If it's something that's more controversial, it could take up um, some time for the commission to to deliberate that and make a decision on. And in terms of numbers, what what do you think? Again, a lot of it is is market driven, but you could be looking at upwards of ten to twenty applications a year. Oh, okay. How many uh, applications have been considered uh, by the planning board? Let's say last year, you my colleagues, you uh, we. We're fortunate to have two esteemed uh, colleagues with us that served uh, <laughs> on the planning board. Um, you know, your experience. Uh, how how many planning? How many hotel items uh, did went before the planning board last year in terms of new applications? I, I my recollection, and I, I'm notoriously bad at remembering these things, but it wasn't a lot. And they they typically came to us only if they wanted something different. Right, because people were able to develop hotels as of right. 
So if they wanted something special or extra or different to use their space differently. I, it wasn't and a I, lot. Right, and, and I think that's where, if I could, Mr. Chair, through you. Yes. Um, I, I think that's where my idea was going with this is the hotels, especially as of right, we just wake up one day and we have no idea Hotel Urbana is correct. being built on Fifth Street. So this isn't to stop that, but maybe that application comes before us and we say, you know what, we know you're great, or actually even in better example, Sunset Harbor, right? Where we say, yes, we know that you can build a hotel, but would it take an extra floor to get you to convert to residential? Mm -hmm. And it really facilitates that conversation, but it also allows hotels, like Commissioner Dominguez pointed out, that are great for our city. Right, they are going to be the flagship going forward. It allows us to uh, move those forward. What I'm going to suggest is that I, th I think that this is a very important discussion. And perhaps what we should do is before we send this to the full city commission, we have our staff, our, our director and our city attorney uh, come back to the land use committee with a proper framework that we can consider. Uh, so that so that then we can um, then make a recommendation and, s and send the recommendation to the full city commission. Would that be acceptable? Yeah. Okay. While while we're while we're on this item, um, Mr. Director, as it relates to average unit sizes, um, how has that had an impact on hotel development in our city? What's the framework that's in that's in place? Uh, g guide me a little bit on that. So uh, hotels generally have um, a minimum unit size of, of between 300 and 335 square feet for purely hotel units. Suite hotel units, which have kitchens, um, have a minimum unit size of 550. There are some areas of the city, such as um, the North Beach Town Center and the Washington Avenue corridor that allow for what we call micro hotel units or smaller hotel units. They can be as small as 175 square feet. Um, there has been some hotel development along Washington Avenue that's taken advantage of that. In terms of residential units, as you may recall, when the commission adopted the new resiliency code last year, it removed the requirement for a minimum um, average unit size of 800 square feet uh, in the RM2 and RM3 districts, subject to the developer agreeing not to have any short-term rentals. If they wanted to do short-term rentals in those districts, which, which are permitted, then they were required to meet the current average unit size of 800 square feet. To date, we haven't seen anybody take advantage of that. Okay, I think I would like to bring a separate item to a future land use uh, meeting to discuss specifically uh, uh, unit sizes and you know so that we can go into this issue more 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 in depth if you could uh, work with our attorney on that maybe we can place uh, an item on the agenda okay uh, that's a referral to to land use on, on average unit sizes I would co-sponsor that and please uh, p please include Commissioner Vaught as a, as a co-sponsor on that okay and Commissioner Magazine okay great um, with that, uh, Mr. Director, um, any other uh, matters before the body that that you would like feedback on? Uh, do you feel that you've gotten you've received sufficient feedback from us on these matters? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, just to confirm on the last item, the um, the portion of the item that's being continued regarding the establishment of the advisory criteria for the planning board and for the criteria for the commission to use to approve future hotels. We will try to bring that back to you at the May 1, 2024 meeting. Yes, it'll be great. Uh, these these items from, from today that we've discussed, it'll be great if we can bring them back together. Uh, whichever are coming back to the city to to the land use committee, uh, they could be brought together at the same time. That way we can have a comprehensive discussion on this. Uh, before we close uh, these the, these items, uh, are there members of the public wishing to speak on these on these items? I don't see anyone in person coming to the po to the podium virtually. I don't see anyone with their with their hands raised. So with that, I'm gonna conclude this item. Uh, with no other items on the agenda, I'm gonna. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make that motion. All right. So we stand adjourned. Thank you, colleagues. <laughs>